So today I was assigned the anterior pituitary hormones to research in this project. So these hormones are secreted by the anterior of the pituitary of behind. Uh, this is the, one of the mastery glands because with the help of the hypothalamus it provides six major hormones. This includes prolactin or PLR, growth hormone or GH, adrenocorticotropic hormone CTH, which I know I butchered, the leucinizing hormone or LH, and the follicle stimulating hormone GH, and the thyroid stimulating hormone TSH. All of these are non-steroid hormones. First step I want to take is I want to speak about these how these hormones are released. So basically these hormones are and are part of the endocrine system and they're non-steroid hormones. And these hormones are secreted by the separate cell type within the anterior pituitary. So if you want ACTH hormone, a hormone named ACTH-RH uh, are secreted into the bloodstream and then they eventually they enter the pituitary and then this stimulates the secretion of the anterior pituitary hormones and these hormones. These hormones are then arrive at the pituitary gland which will increase the secretion of one or more of the six pituitary hormones that I had just spoke about. Um, it is important to know that all these hormones are, are uh, like the secretion of the hormones are controlled by the negative feedback control system in our body in order to maintain homeostasis. Basically, there is a set point of hor hormone. When it falls below or above this point, the control center targets cell, tissue, and organs associated with it to change the amount of hormones in the body. So the endocrine system is the control center. The hormones represents the pathway between the control center and the effectors. And the effectors are hormones target cell tissues or organs so that's basically how this how hormones are controlled in the body and how the body makes sure there's not too much or not too little bit of a hormone next i'm going to talk about the function and the process of each hormone so first up is the adrenocortropic hormone or acth this hormone stimulates adrenal cortex the target cell for this hormone is on the outer layer of the adrenal gland and it this stimulates the release of another hormone called glucoratoids, which is a steroid hormone involved in stress-related conditions and also in, in control of the glucose metabolism. So uh, this hormone is regulated by the negative feedback loop. So basically, it, this hormone is in control of our stress-related and the control of our glucose metabolism. Next is the thyroid stimulating hormone, and another name is tryptropin. And basically, this just re this just stimulates the thyroid glands to release thyroid hormone. Next is the folic stimulating hormone, or FSH, and the luteinizing hormone, or LH. These two hormones are known as gonadotropins because they stimulate growth, development, and functions of the reproductive systems, which is different from the growth hormones. So, for example, uh, FSH allows for egg development, and LH creates ovulation in females. And in males, FSH starts the sperm development, and LH produces the hormone testosterone. And this, these two hormones become most apparent when in puberty, when it's needed for sexual maturity. Next is prolactin. These hormones' main function is to stimulate the development of the mammary glands and production of milk. So this hormone is present in males, but they are unsure about what the function is, but in females, this hormone uh, increases the is increased in the concentration of the bloodstream close to the end of pregnancy, when milk is needed for uh, a newborn child. Next is the growth hormone, and as it says in its name, growth hormone initiates growth. Their effects are so widespread; it's hard to pinpoint exactly where, or where it affects in general but we know it affects the most in the bones and muscles of our body. Uh, GH influences cells to promote growth, so they promote protein synthesis, cell division, and the use of body fat as a source of energy. Although this hormone is with us for most of our life, it is more apparent in our childhood and preteen stages of life. And as adults, it continues to help regulate metabolism by using fats and amino acids as cellular fuel, as well as maintaining our glucose levels.